Hi people, uh, today's tutorial we're going to be looking at 3D modelling within 3ds Max and for this first tutorial we're going to look at modelling a desk which we will later UVW unwrap and add to part of a detailed scene that we're going to make. Uh, the aim of this project is to be a short concise uh, project where basically we're going to make an animation uh, in a brief scene for our story, uh, story driven game. Okay, let's get started. So, first and foremost, we're going to start with just going to make ourselves a nice box. Now, if you're not familiar with what a desk looks like, I suggest you use reference images. I use reference images for pretty much everything, but as I'm modeling this whilst perching my laptop on a desk, I'm pretty confident that I know what a desk looks like. So, what I'm going to do in the top viewport, I'm just going to draw myself out a nice simple box, something like that, a rectangle. There you go. Set the height. You can see in the front viewport. Set my height, okay. That's all right. Let's have a look at this in this viewport. All right. When my computer decides to catch up with itself, tumble view doesn't seem to be working. There we go. Very slow this morning. Right. So, what we want to do is just sort of edit that a little bit. I'm not quite as happy about that. So, just going to edit those proportions in, make it a little bit shorter. Bit taller. It doesn't matter too much, but I'm quite happy with that because I want to put a drawer in the front of this desk, so I wanted something a little bit more um, interesting. Okay, my middle mouse button doesn't seem to be working today, which could cause all sorts of problems. There we go, it's going to be an interesting tutorial. So, what I'm going to first and foremost do is I'm going to start to add some detail to this desk, okay? And by doing that, I'm going to right click and press convert to and change it to an editable poly, okay? We always change our objects to editable polys at the moment. Once we've done that, we're going to start adding some detail. So I would like to put a drawing in the front of my object. Now the way I'm going to do that is I'm just going to drag and select all of these edges around here, okay? You can see I haven't selected any of the vertical ones, I've just selected all the horizontal edges. And what we're going to do is we're going to connect these edges. I mean, there is another way of doing it. If I just click on an edge, press ring, you'll notice it selects them for me, but it's just as easy to click and drag. Once I've done that, scroll down here, find myself the connect tool. Now rather than just using the connect tool standard, because that will give us one line, I would like two lines. So I'm going to press on the settings box next to it here. Once I've pressed on that, I'm going to change that value to two, because I want two segments. You can see one, two, and they're automatically right in the middle of the desk. Now if I look at it in this viewport, I'm pretty happy with that. I think that's quite a good sort of size drawer to put in the middle of my desk. So I press OK. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and add a bit of detail here. So obviously the drawer doesn't need to work, not for the scene that we have in mind. It just needs to visually look impressive and that's what we're going to do. So we're just modeling a desk. So I'm going to come up here to polygon mode. We're going to click on the face that we want to make the drawer and we're going to inset it a little bit. What that means is slightly shrink this face down, give it another sort of few vertexes so I come to inset and I can visually change that down a little bit and you can see I've made like a margin around the edge of it okay once I've done that I press tick come back up to my extrude tool and you can see I'm in the top viewport okay so like that's fine all right let's see if my middle mouse button will work now so what we've done is we made a slight sort of draw sort of face coming out. I mean if you're not happy with that and you want to move that back a little bit, which I might do. Good lord my mouse is going to be frustrating for this session, but there we go. Okay. So that's all we've done so far with that a little little bit of detail there. Now I might add a little handle on there. Um let's do it in a cheap and quick and easy way. So what I'll do is I will make myself a sphere. Okay, a little door knob there. Just move that forward. Uh, now I'm going to hemisphere that. I'm going to slice it. Why not? So, I should have just typed that in. I know I want it to be 180 because I only want half of my circle, my sphere even. I can rotate that in that viewport. You can see right at the bottom of your screen that I've rotated it to 90 degrees. I'm just going to move that around to the front of the desk. Okay. Still not quite convinced. Obviously, it's not in the center either. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this squash tool. Click on the y axis here, and you can see that the, the cursor changes. I'm just going to squash that in a little bit so it's 
It's a little bit like a handle, all right? For the purpose of what we need, that's more than enough. Like I said, this is this is a brief um, game session tutorial. It doesn't necessarily need to have uh, all the bells and whistles. We're just going to make it, um, an impressive scene where a user will be able to click on an object and move on to the next scene. You know, Walking Dead style sort of story-driven narrative game. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to go back into the polymer because I'd like to add some legs to my table. The way I do that is simple. Okay, so I'm going to come up here, modify. Got edge tool, and this time I do it slightly differently. So, what I'd like to do is I need to add four corners to my object. I need to add some squares in the corner now. And what I'm trying to do is rotate my object. What isn't happening is the rotation of my object. So I'm going to have to do this the hard way. Okay, these tutorials are going to be somewhat frustrating if I have to. Uh, use the tools to rotate every time. So, I've selected these two faces here, and like we did before, I'll just press on the ring tool, okay, and that highlights all of those in that row. Now, what I will do is I'm going to select the connect tool. This time I only need one. And with this middle, oh no, the middle one won't, the middle one changes the distance between two objects, but technically these aren't on the same, these are these are two different lines, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to... My viewport seems to be very slow this morning, so I'm going to move it, move it, move it, move it, move it. This is going to be the width of my leg, so let's make it something like that. You don't have to have the exact settings, but you can do it by I and C. That looks not too bad. Okay, I'm happy with that. Now what I want to do, because if I'm going to extrude like a square out there, I'm going to need another part of my leg. So I'm going to click on this one face here. Again, I'm going to come up here, I'm going to press ring, scroll down, go to connect, and this time I would like two, okay, because these aren't separated, these are all one solid line, I can have two. I'll change this to zero, because I want them to start in the middle, and this pinch part here, this is the distance, as I just mentioned, between the two lines, so if I change that distance up this time, change it to something like that, press tick, I've made myself four little boxes there. Now what we need to do is come into polygon mode, select using the control, holding down control and clicking, select my four faces like that, I'll come down to extrude, extrude settings even, and let's have a look at this, this viewport. Ramp that right up, not too much, let's see what that looks like, I can always move it, right, I'm going to have to rotate that. Uh, <laughs> right. Okay, zoom out a little bit. Very nice. Okay, so very, very basic, nothing to it, but once we've textured it and stuff, it's going to look like a, a nice sort of semi realistic table. I'm not going to promise it's going to look overly realistic, but so far that's a, that's a good start. Okay, so next we're going to look at texturing this table and then we're going to start making some more of the scene. Okay, right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at texturing this object, but I want to wrap my texture around it. And not just approximately, I want to wrap it in detail and I'll be able to fully control what my texture looks like when it's applied to this object. And the way to do that is UVW mapping. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a UVW mapping modifier. Now the modifier list is up here. So I've got my editable poly selected. I click on the drop down and I select. Right, I've got a few options. I would like to add a UVW map. I add the UVW map like so. That's a lie. Cancel that. <laughs> Scratch that. I want to unwrap my UVW. Okay. Even better. So, what I do now, once I've unwrapped my UVW, is I'm just going to click on polygon mode, select them all with Control and A, and then come to Open UVW Editor. Or Open UV Editor anyway. And you'll see Edit UVW window comes up. Got uh, my UVWs here, they're packed into this little square here, so at the moment they're, um, you see there's a little checkerboard square there, they're all sort of packed into there, I can turn the checkerboard off if I don't necessarily want to see it, but what I'd like to do is I don't want to flatten that, so I come up to mapping, I press flatten mapping, I get this option come up, I'm quite happy with that, so I just press OK, and if you can see it there, in this sort of little grey box, 
I've unwrapped all of my objects, okay? At this moment in time, they're not related to one another, they're all stuck together. I want to move this around a little bit to stick them together, sort of um, make a piece. I want to make sure the legs are attached together to the bits they're meant to be, and the front of the table is attached to the back of the table, and things like that. So, so that when I apply a texture, it's going to look real, there isn't going to be seams and things like that. So what I can do... Again, this doesn't have to be perfect, we're just learning the principles here. It doesn't matter, it doesn't have to be a work of art, I'm just teaching you the principles. So, what we're going to do for this next part, is we're going to start stitching some parts together. So we're going to come over here, and we're going to turn on edge mode. Okay. Now, right at the bottom of this object here, you've got a few options, you could have just turned edge mode on here. But you've got select by element UV toggle. So if I now select one line for an object, you can notice it selects the whole object. So that's quite a useful tip. We're not going to use that right now. But I just wanted to do that. So if I click on an edge, say for example, I've clicked on this edge here, okay? Right, so sorry if there's some continuity issues. I had a little bit of a problem with 3S Max crashing um, in my the video that I was working on. So I've gone back in time to show you what's happening. So uh, where was I? I was saying that I was going to attach some of these faces together. Now the way to do that is simple. So what I do is I click on, I don't know, I'm going to click on one of these faces, okay? So I'm going to click all the faces in this line here. Now you can see, like I say, the ones opposite, the uh, the ones that he's joined to, shall we say, are the ones that are highlighted in blue. So I've got my ones in red that I selected and the ones that they're joining to highlight in blue. Now if I come up here and press Stitch Custom, that will actually attach the two objects together. Now, the tool I just told you about, select element by UV. I can click on that, and I can just use my move tool to move these out of the way. Now, let's have a look at the faces. Let's turn off, because I don't want to highlight the whole object. You can see that face corresponds to that one, that one to that one, and so on and so forth, which is quite nice. I'm quite happy with that, okay? So I'm just going to keep doing this. So I'll show you one more time, and then I'll let you do it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click one, two, three, four, five. Stick those faces here. I come up to this one, Stitch Custom. I click on Stitch Custom, and guess what? It's all highlighted. So I'm quite happy with that. It looks all right. I could detach the legs and then do those separately, but I don't want to. I'm just going to put a big texture over this, and it's going to look really nice. Hmm. So. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pause the video now and then I'm going to finish this off, show you my result, but I want you to have a go at that yourself. So remember you press on one of your lines with element mode off, so you press on one of your lines, it corresponds to a blue line, and you just press stitch custom and it will stitch them together. But you don't want to stitch the whole thing together, you want it in sections like you're just about to see me do, okay? But I suggest you pause the video here and have a go yourself before you watch my end result. Don't worry too much, it doesn't have to look exactly the same as mine, but as long as you get similar results, okay? in a sec. Right, okay, so welcome back, even though no time has passed for you. Um, so here is my my finished uh, article, okay, so I'm not quite finished actually, there's one more thing I want to show you, but what you might be finding is that, say for example you've got some things out and about, uh, you might want to repackage it, so what you can do to move everything, you can highlight everything polygon tool and then if you just simply click on this button here which I've already pressed pack custom it will pack everything back into this square because anything outside this checkerboard square which again I can turn off anything outside that square will not be seen you won't be able to texture it so the only thing now I want to do is correct this draw so what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this mode off I'm going to click on this draw here okay and what I'm going to do is set one two three four faces four faces you can see that's the outside of that square, and that should be the outside of the drawer, which connects to these sides. I'm going to wrap that. Now my drawer's on top. You'll see why that's important in a minute, but I don't want the seams to be unstitched. So I'm quite happy with that. I've got the bottom of the table all together here. I've got the top of the table all together here. And then I have got the inside legs available here. I could go further and stitch all these onto the side, but I'm quite happy with that at the moment. We're just going to see what this looks like, okay? But just for now, this will do nicely. So, what we do to render this out, I'm going to run out of time, but I'll move this into another video, is we come up here and we render this out. And I will show you how to do that in the next video. So, we should all be at a point here where we've got all of our UV map inside of this box. That's the stage that I expect everyone to be at. Thank you.